A small town in India, located on the banks of River Ganges and housing the very first engineering college in the country, Rurki was where I was born and raised. We were a big, fat Indian family of mostly, obviously, engineers, all living on the top floor of a big school that my grandmother actually started. I really liked this insular feeling. I felt safe. If I needed anything, my grandparents or parents were always around. If I had a problem, my cousins always had a solution. All this changed when I moved to university. I was an A student and got accepted into the Bachelors of Engineering degree program in Bombay, the city of my dreams, the Bollywood city of the world. It was big, bright, shiny, and modern. Everything my dorm room wasn't. <laughs> During rains, it would flood from the terrace. Fungus that looked like cotton balls covered the floor no matter how much I cleaned it. Power outages were the norm, and I had to spend most of my nights studying under the candlelight. We also had water shortages, and I had to cut 10 to 15 gallons of water up five flights of stairs all by myself. I was young and energetic and had the desire to be something. A little water was not going to stop me because engineering meant everything to me. Being a top student meant even more. So when I failed my first year, my world came tumbling down. The failure was a big blow for me. I failed my studies, the only thing I took pride in. I had no idea how I would face the society. I wanted to run, hide away somewhere. Ever since I was a child, I wanted to have a respectable career and do something to make my parents proud. After the failure, I doubted if I was intelligent enough to pursue higher studies and become an engineer. What's worse, I was being ragged. In India, that's equivalent to bullying for the way I looked and the way I dressed. I didn't fail for these reasons, though. I failed because I was lonely, away from my family for the very first time. I was 18, shy, a true introvert. I just didn't fit into that new modern system. I wanted to drop out. And I never understood why my fellow classmates were wasting their life dancing in a discourse when I wanted to sit and meditate. <laughs> but during one of those meditations, an inner voice told me that if I drop out at this stage, then I will be termed a failure all my life. Cognitive studies researcher Shadong Lynn Ziegler examines failure. She says that failure gives people a chance to regroup and rewind the clock. In her recent study, she encourages her students to look at failure as a normal process of learning. Others, like Carol Dweck from Stanford, who studies mindset, says that failure is necessary for growth. This concept resonates with me. Failure is momentary and does not define us. I gathered all my courage, tried again, successfully finished my bachelor's degree, and landed a job right after. In 2004, I moved to US after having an arranged marriage and landed in Arizona. I had learned a lot of wonderful things about the higher studies in the United States of America. And so I enrolled in Arizona State University. And because I loved studying and going to college so much, I ended up doing not one, but two master's degrees in <laughs> engineering. <laughs> so while I was deep in my studies, being a dutiful wife and working corporate full time, I was also deep in the cookie jar. I was hyped on caffeine, and my main food groups were pizza and pasta. 
I tell people I was essentially living my American dream. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I was 30 pounds overweight. As you can see, I'm barely five feet tall, so those pounds had nowhere to go but out. <laughs> Any regular person would join a gym and hire a health coach. My solution was to find my way to health. And so I joined a diploma program in personal training and holistic nutrition. While I was in the program, my father who lives in India had a massive heart attack. I boarded the first flight home to be with him, the longest 24 hour flight of my life. After two months, another heart attack, multiple surgeries and a pacemaker. My father and all our family were discharged from the hospital. I felt so helpless at that time. I had too many degrees under my belt, but was missing the most important thing, how to save my father's health. I started researching and learning everything about holistic health and nutrition. What started as a way to help my family and help my father became my passion. For me, engineering essentially means learning how to do new things. It doesn't have to be anything technical. It could be something as simple as learning how to breathe correctly. Engineering as a process involves questioning certain things and find a solution to them. I love this because you could essentially engineer your way to just about anything. This is where things get interesting, you see. I learned that passion is a system and can be engineered just like life. Wharton professor and organizational psychologist Adam Grant says that simply to follow your passion could be the worst advice because in today's time, many don't even know what their passion is. He often says, passion is the product of hard work, not its driver. Perhaps then, Engineering your passion should be the new advice. Because of my newly engineered passion, I started offering holistic health and wellness workshops, both online and offline. Patrons of my workshop started asking me for handouts and my best recipes. And once I started writing, this handout became a book on green juicing. After I finished writing the book, I asked myself, did I write the book for four of my friends and family members? <laughs> the answer was obviously no. <laughs> it was time once again to learn how things work. What popped for me was the fact that because of my background as an engineer, I was easily able to understand and decipher this complex world of book publishing and marketing. I worked tirelessly during my book launch to promote it. And after the book release, people started asking me the secret behind what looked like an overnight success. In fact, one of the first people who asked me about my success was Evita Rampate, who had also written the introduction of my book. She was already an established wellness professional with a lot of documentaries under her belt, but her books were not doing so good. I taught her how to engineer her way to success. And once she followed the process, not only her books, but even her career took a new flight. In fact, she's the one who encouraged me to take this process of engineering your passion and teach others. Four years later, I have had the honor of helping more than 150 writers become published authors. Evita herself, is an international speaker and a coach for celebrities, athletes, and movie stars. During this entire time, I kept thinking how I could help others because I wanted to give back to the community. I invited moms to be a part of collaborative book, which soon became an anthology on advice on parenting from more than 111 moms from different parts of the world. I had the entire publishing know-how, and so I was able to give these moms a platform to share their message, share their voice with the world. And this entire process I discovered by being persistent, 
by understanding your passion, by learning new things, and by being of service, you can change a lot of people's lives. Engineering your passion doesn't have to start or stop with anything. Life is a continuum, and so is passion. Once you stop learning, once you stop growing, you essentially stop living. But how do you do this? For me, engineering your passion is a simple equation. Mind plus body multiplied by soul is equal to passion. Be mindful, be curious, do whatever you need to do to change and grow yourself. Cleanse your body, eat healthy, do regular physical exercise. Don't just wear a cute yoga pant and call it a day. <laughs> do everything you do with awareness. Most people will follow the first two in bits and pieces, but forget the most important part of the equation, which is honor your soul. Soul is essentially a combination of listening to your inner voices and being of act of service. Do whatever you're doing wholeheartedly and give authentically because then the universe gives you back multifold. By implementing this mind, body, and soul equation, you will not only find your passion, but you will have the right tools to build a business or a career that you love and live a life that you always dream of. I want that for you. It's time to engineer your passion. Thank you. Thank you.